Hello student, in this video we will discuss about the embryological basis of different kinds of atrial septal defects. So when you are talking about the atrial septal defects, first you should understand that atrial septal defect is a kind of congenital heart anomaly and when you are talking about the incidence, its incidence is approximately 6 or 6.4 per 10,000 live births and when you will see the sex ratio it is 2 is to 1 in female to male. Now when we are talking about the atrial septal defects, now atrial septal defects are of four type. One is the ostium primum defect, then you will have ostium secundum defect, where then you will have the complete absence of the atrial septum and fourth is the atrial septal defects related with the sinus venosus defect. Now when you will see all the four types, in all the four types, this ostium secundum defects are most commonly seen defects. Now when we are talking about ostium primum defects, my dear students, these defects not only affects the atrial septum, but if the sept is defect is there, it always affects the ventricular septum as well as the formation of atrioventricular valve. So how it happens, we will discuss one by one. So first, your atrial septal defect with your endocardial cushion defect. So my dear students, when we are talking about endocardial cushion, first you understand that this endocardial cushion contribute in the formation of three areas. So what these three areas, one is your lower part of interatrial septum. So in my class of the formation of interatrial septum, I explain you that when the lower part of the septum primum going downwards, it is going to ultimately fuse with the AV cushion. And initially there is a gap is present and that gap is known as ostium primum. So whenever the atrial septal defect occurs with the AV cushion defect, it is always a persistence of which foramen? Answer is foramen primum or ostium primum. So here in this diagram, you can see this is atrium, this is ventricle and these are your AV cushion. Now what will happen because this AV cushion is a common area between the atrium and ventricle. So what will happen when there is a separation occurs in the atrium and when there is a separation occurs in the ventricle, the lower part of this interatrial septa and part of this interventricular septa, both are going to merge with this developing middle portion which is known as atrioventricular cushion or AV cushion. But if this cushion will not form, what will happen? This particular part of your interatrial septum and this particular part of your interventricular septum will not form. That means you will have a defect here in the interatrial septum, you will have a defect here in the interventricular septum and simultaneously there is a defect in the partition of this canal. That means there is a defect in the formation of your tricuspid or bicuspid valve. Clear? So this is the first and most important concept that when we are talking about the AV cushion of your AV atrioventricular canal, there are three things which are going to form by these cushion. One is the part of interatrial septum, the part of interventricular septum and the partitioning of your canal. So the septum primum does not fuse with the endocardial cushion. As a result, the uh, there is a patency of the foramen primum. So we know that when this interatrial septum, which is known as septum primum, is uh, growing downward toward the AV cushion and there is an initial gap is present and this gap is known as foramen primum. So when this fusion will not occur, this foramen primum or ostium primum remain patent. But dear students, this endocardial cushion defect of ASD is not a isolated uh, ASD because this ASD always associated with the VSD. Wha what type of VSD? It is a type of membranous VSD. So in this atrial septal defect with endocardial cushion defect, it is a triad. So what are the three things are there? You will have ASD. In this ASD, there is a uh, persistence of ostium primum. You will have VSD and this VSD is of membranous type and you will have the AV valve defect. That means the canal defect is also there and particularly here you will have the involvement of tricuspid valve. Clear? So this is a question sometimes in your, your exam that when we are talking about endocardial cushion defect with atrial septum defects, 
what is the three things. So, these are the three things which you have to understand. Clear? Now, the next type of defect is ostium secundum defect. Now, before going to see the defect, you have to understand that ostium secundum is this area and this ostium secundum lies above this lower part of septum primum and on one side it is overlap by this septum secundum. Now, if this ostium secundum is persist, that means there can be two possibility. What are the two possibility? The first possibility is that if the size of this ostium increases. Now, when the size will increase, the size can be increased if this lower septum, that means the size of septum primum is, is small. So, if this septum is smaller in the size, automatically this sept, uh, ostium secundum increases in the size. Second problem can be if this area which is overlapping is also shorter in the size. So, when we are talking about the ostium secundum defects, they has been classified into the two variety. In this variety, what you are able to understand that this is a normal length of your septum secundum. But the normal length of septum primum which has to be here is not there. So, what will happen because of the absence of normal length of septum primum, the size of your developing ostium secundum is increases and that is why this channel is persist. Clear? Now, in this what is happening? In this the things are reverse. Now, here you can see this is your normal size. The lower part of the septum that means the septum primum is normal in size and the septum which will grow here which is known as septum secundum is absent. So, in this condition what will happen you are able to see the persistence of ostium secundum. So, the presence of ostium secundum defect can be of two type if the septum primum is shorter in size or the septum secundum is shorter in size clear. So, my dear students, one of the most significant defect is ostium secundum defects and these ostium secundum defects characterized by the large opening between the right and left atria. So, in both the cases what is happening, the septums are shorter in the length which is abnormal. The normal length is not there. If the septum primum is short, then also the foramen increases or if the septum secundum is short, it is not completely able to overlap the developing ostium secundum. So, depending on the size of the opening, considerable intracardiac shunting may occurs from left to right. So, why left to right? Because here we are talking after birth. So, after birth the pressure in left chamber is very high. So, that child will born with left to right shunt. Clear? Now, there is a one more abnormality here what is happening the interatrial septum is not there. So, there is a no partition and the right and left atria fuses with each other there is a single chamber is seen. Now, in this patient you will have total three chambers two ventricles and one atria that is why this is also known as trilocure biventricular clear. So, it is a common atrial chamber which is known as core trilocure biventricular defect. Now, in this condition there is a complete absence of the septum primum as well as septum secundum and this condition is always associated with the other serious kind of congenital heart defects. Now, there is a another anomaly which is known as premature closure of foramen oval. Now, see when we are talking about the foramen oval, what is the function of foramen oval? Now, when you will see this part, this is your membranous valve like lower portion of septum primum and above that you will have the ostium secundum and this ostium secundum is overlaid by one more septa which is known as septum secundum which is a more rigid and muscular septum. Now, what will happen when the pressure is high in the right side in intrauterine life? What will happen? This flap will go down and when it will go down, the shunting will take place from right to left. But after birth, what will happen? The chamber of left side having more blood. So, this will go back and this foramen oval disappears by the fusion of these two ends of septas. But my dear students, if this fusion of the two ends of septas occurs in the intrauterine life, then it is known as premature closure of foramen oval. 
सो प्री मेच्योर क्लोजर ऑफ फोरम एन ओवल मीन्स वैन द लोअर एंड ऑफ द सेप्टम सेकेंडम एंड अपर एंड ऑफ द सेप्टम प्राइमम फ्यूजेज इन द इंट्रा यूट्राइन लाइफ देन वी विल टर्म एज ए प्री मेच्योर लाइफ क्लोजर विच अकर्स इन द प्री नेटल लाइफ now in this what will happen this abnormality lead to the massive hypertrophy of the right atria as well as right ventricle why because in the intrauterine life we know that the pulmonary circulation is absent and whatever the blood is entering from the umbilical veins they, that blood will first enter into the right chamber of the heart with the help of uh, vena cava so the blood is coming into the right chamber now the passage from right to left is blocked so what will happen the pressure is uh, very high in the right chamber so right chamber has to push more to circulate this blood or to push this blood from left to right so the musculature of the right chamber become thick and this is known as hypertrophy so the musculature of the right chambers is become hypertrophied now it causes under development of the left side heart why because the oxygen supply of these left wall is decreases and that's why the left heart uh, is under developed now such infant when born they will die immediately after the birth why because the left heart is not developed so left heart is not having the power to push this blood into the uh, systemic circulation after birth so my dear students if there is a premature closer of foramen oval occurs what will happen the right to left shunting is not there so that's why in my class of development of interatrial septum i told you that this is right to left shunting into the intrauterine life has to maintain through the whole 9 months of gestation period because this right to left shunting is responsible for the development of left side of heart clear now the sinus venosus defects with atrial septal defects now when you will see the sinus venosus defects what you are able to understand that these defects of sinus venosus create a very high level of asds that's why they are also known as atrial septal defects of high nature now here you can see that this is your septum this is septum primum and here will be the septum secundum so just above the septum secundum a defect is appear in upper part of developing interatrial septum so it is located into the superior part of interatrial septum close or near to the opening of superior vena cava here you can see this is superior vena cava and near the superior vena cava opening will have a defect into the septum which is high in appearance so if in exam you are having a word high appearance of atrial septal defects that means we are talking about defects into the septum secundum and these defects are always associated with the sinus venosus defects so a sinus venosus defect is rare type of asd it results from incomplete absorption of sinus venosus into the right atrium or abnormal development of septum secundum so this high atrial uh, septal defects occurs because of the two reason one if there is a abnormal absorption of sinus venosus or second if there is a defective development of septum secundum now there is a one more term comes is what is pro patency of foramen oval now my dear students what will happen after birth when after birth the pulmonary circulation establish the pressure into the left chamber increases now as the pressure increases into the left chamber it will pushes this membranous septum towards the posterior side and what will happen these two ends of the respective septums fuses with each other and they will block the shunting of the blood now this fusion in 25% cases what will happen not completely seen so after birth i can pass a probe through this gap of the septum primum and the septum secundum so pro patency means that when the baby born the shunting is not there no blood is going from right to left or left to right atrium because this partition is closed by the fusion of lower end of septum secundum and upper end of septum primum but 
the fusion between two ends is not took place so you can forcefully pass a, a small probe between the two areas and that's why it is known as probe patency which is seen around 20 to 25 percent of infants now my dear students this probe patency defect is not going to create any kind of clinical symptoms into this born child why because the shunting is not there but in some cardiac conditions what will happen we have to maintain this patency so if a pro patency of foramen oval may be forcefully open in some cardiac condition so for the treatment of some heart diseases we need the shunting in such condition you can forcefully open this pro patency otherwise if you will not disturb this patency what will happen with the time there is a anatomical fusion will took place so my dear students what do you mean by the pro patency the meaning of pro patency is that in 20 to 25 percent cases we can forcefully pass a probe between the lower end of septum secundum and upper end of septum primum and this pro patency does not create any clinical significance in the um, newborn why because there is no shunting is seen clear so my dear students now if you have this question in exam write down the embryological basis of atrial septal defects so you understand that this defects can be occurs due to the persistence of foramen primum or it may be due to the persistence of foramen secundum the foramen secundum defects are more common if foramen primum uh, defects in the septum is there then it is always associated with the abnormality into the sep uh, ventricular septum which is known as vsd and it is associated with the mitral valve defects clear so whenever you are writing the embryological basis you have to write down in brief about the development of interatrial septum what is septum primum what is septum secundum what is ostium primum what is ostium secundum so this is all for the session thank you